Hey everybody, it's Darcy. Today we're talking about the different shades and hues of the color black. Here we go. Hey everybody, first I want to say uh, thanks for all the, I got 50 subscribers on my last video. Thank you so much for all the nice comments and everything. I think I now have 351 subscribers and that might be the most in the world at this point. I haven't checked, but I think it might be. So today we're talking about color theory, and it's pretty simple. I'll just go through some of the basics, but basically white light comes down. It's all different hues of reds and blues and purples and the color of the rainbow. In the case of maple, uh, her hair is white, so when the white light reflects into her and it reflects back in her eyes, we see the color white. Um, a different example would be a red apple. The white light hits the red apple, and the red wavelengths come back and we see red. So it's pretty simple. Now, what I'm going to do with maple, just to show you the difference, is I'm going to take a little... I've got basically a bottle of black ink here. And I'm going to pour it all over maple. And we're just going to see how it changes um, the, the color of the dog and how then I'll, this is black ink and then your, how your eyes will perceive her as black. So just give me a second, I'm just going to pour this on her. It gets pretty messy. Hold on. Here we go. One second. Oh, good girl. Okay, so I just got to dry her off a bit. So now that I've poured the black ink on maple, she's black now. So see now, you can tell um, that when the white light hits her and because of the black ink in her white fur and now reflects back and you see a black dog. Now the other thing too is you know why this dog is different than my black shirt is because we are different colors of black. That's why you can still see her. Now some people are going, well, of course we can see her, it's a dog. But if these were the same identical colors of black and they were reflecting back on us, you would not see Daisy, oh, it's a different dog. You would not see Daisy where um, my shirt is. But because she's a different color black than my black shirt, you can see her. Okay, so that's the quick principle behind this. Let's go. Good girls. So we are going to be talking about the CMYK color code which is used uh, especially in the printing field. Uh, C stands for cyan, which is blue, M magenta, which is the reddish, Y for yellow, and K for black. Um, it helps to uh, choose a color based on rendering uh, for the printer. Now, CMYKs are the percent values for the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black and it is a number that ranges from 0 to 100. So because we're looking at black you may assume that the darkest possible black out there would uh, be 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 100 because that puts that at 100 percent black and has no other colors. But now we want to see if that's actually true. So just so you know, pure black refers to the absence of color. Rich blacks have some other colors in them to create different shades of black, whether it be a warm black or a cool black or a, an American black, for example. So let's go through some various types of black. Now there are several shades of black so I'm only going to go through a handful of the more popular ones starting from um, n let me just say not as black until the very darkest black that's out there. So let's see if you know what it is as we go along. We're first going to start with ebony. Now ebony as you can see is 9, 0, 14, 
64. Ebony is a dark, dark wood, um, and it's considered a dark black. However, one step darker is actually charcoal black. Now, charcoal black is 32.13.069. So all of a sudden, you're getting in some blues in there, some heavier blues at 32%. And to keep going, there is outer space black, as well as jet black, such as Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, the band that sing I Love Rock and Roll, and I will not sing for you, so don't worry. Then we get into um, other specialty colors of black, which were created by Crayola. So let's talk about those. Now in 1994, Crayola came out with the Gem Tones, and I've also heard reference to it as being the Gem Stones um, color collection, and the black included in that one was Onyx. Now, Crayola, as you can imagine, they're color masters. They also came up with another product called the Crayola Magic Scent Crayons, and there's some blacks in there. Let's go over them now. Now, in 1994, um, <laughs> Crayola came out with the Crayola Magic Scent Crayons. Now, what I find really odd about this is this little box of new crayons actually had two blacks in it. Um, one was licorice black, and the other one was black leather jacket. So, it's kind of neat because those are definitely two different uh, smells and very distinctive smells. Um, but can you can you imagine getting a box of whatever eight crayons and two of them are blacks and you'd be saying to your friends Hey, man, can I borrow your black licorice crayon? And I was the type of kid that would probably say well, it smelled so good. I ate it anyway So finally we're at the point we're going to talk about the darkest black out there and it is called Vanta black now Vanta Black, Vanta is an acronym. It stands for Vertically Aligned Nanotube Array. Essentially, it is a material. It was developed by Surrey Nanosystems and is one of the darkest substances known. And it ab actually absorbs 99.96% of all light. So Vanta Black paint, it's not actually made, but it's, it's grown with these little tiny, tiny billions of nanotubes. Um, when white light hits it, the colors are bounced back and forth and they get absorbed. So none of the white light or therefore no color is reflected back. Um, Vanta Black, it's actually, it's not so much a color as it is the absence of light. Now, Vanta Black is especially useful in scientific components where you need the absence of light, such as deep space telescopes, maybe some medical experiments as well. Um, you can't buy it. It's only for sale, um, or publicly anyway. It's only for sale for specific institutions and educational, educational purposes at this time. So, um, now, let's talk about Vanta Black and eBay quickly. Now, the reason I bring up eBay is when you're done this video, go onto eBay and search for Vanta Black items. And you're gonna find an assortment of shoes and black t-shirts, and they all say in the description, they are, you know, they're so dark, they're Vanta Black. Well, they're not, believe me. Uh, it may be a dark black, but it um, is basically using that name Vanta Black to sort of, um, create the illusion that it's the darkest black ever and well it's not Vanta black because it, it's very specific and has to be grown and regulated and all sorts of crazy things and there's even I thought this was kind of neat there's even an, an author out there who uses the um, ghost writer name called Vanta black so I've never read any of her books but she looks kind of neat anyway uh, listen hope you have a great day um, please like and subscribe the one thing I want to say about this video is um, colors and color theory um, 
it can vary greatly. I don't want to uh, give the impression I'm misleading you um, because while I've given you some numbers with some uh, data from the internet, for example, what the CMYK values are, it could differ um, quite a bit from website to website or who's saying what. So um, this is just sort of a general uh, information session for you. I thought it was pretty fun and neat. And uh, listen, I hope you're having a great day and uh, everything's well. Take care of yourselves. Thank mm -hmm. you.